praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. We're thankful for this day that the Lord has made, and we as his servants will rejoice and be glad. Let us stand as we appear to share our hour of worship to those in your homes this morning. We welcome you and we greet you, and those in the house of God this morning, we greet you as well. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Turn of God, we come now. We thank you for being so good to us. We thank you, God, for watching over us all last week. We thank you for your kindness, your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. God, as we celebrate this day, we celebrate on this beautiful Palm Sunday as your son rode into Jerusalem on a door. We celebrate it in being thankful that the time of this season is a time that we can rejoice in knowing that our Savior is yet alive. And so, God, we thank you right now. I pray, God, for your blessings over this hour and your people, that through your word today, somebody will be saved, restored, revived, and renewed. We pray through your word today, God, that their lives will be changed and help for the betterment of thy service. I pray for someone today that may be wounded, going through a season of hurt or loneliness, God, that you will give them strength. Going through a time of bereavement, that you will comfort them. I pray, God, for families across this community and this country this day, God, that you will help them in a very special way. We bless your name today. We adore you. We magnify you. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Bless your praise leaders as they come forth in this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. On a celebrate in the Lord.
bless you, praise leaders and people of God in this hour. A few announcements and reminders. First, we want to thank you again for your support the last few weeks of Bible study as we've shared in, in the 23rd Psalms in our series. Last week, we shared in part two of the perfect restoration. As I stated this week, there will not be Bible study. We will not meet this Tuesday. However, Wednesday at 12 noon, I would like for you to call in on the conference call number at 10, 11.45. If you will call in at 11.45 on Wednesday, we're going to have an hour of prayer. We're going to start around 11.45, going before the Lord. You can email, you can text your prayer request to us, or you can leave your prayer request today written on paper, but we want to prepare for prayer on Wednesday. And then Thursday, we're, for Friday, we're here. We're here at 11.30 a.m. for our Good Friday service, put it into your hearts and your schedules to be here on Friday at 11.30 a.m. as we share a Good Friday. We're excited. Every year we have a good time during our Good Friday service, celebrating the time of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in those hours before his death. Please come and share with us on third Friday at 11.45. Then Saturday morning, we're here to share and receiving and picking up our communion. We know the first Sunday is on Easter morning, so we'll be here on Saturday morning to pick up our communion, but we will also be here for our photos, shoot, our pictures, taking pictures for our church book, that will be uh, ready in the month of July for our 25 years. All ministries have received the time to be here to take your pictures, prepare, put it into your schedules to be here. Uh, the photographer may be a little ahead schedule, so get here a little early so that your ministry can take pictures and your leaders have informed you of what you should wear on Saturday for your ministry. Some of you will change a few times for the different ministries that you're a part of uh, into your different attire, but prepare to be here on Saturday for our time of taking pictures and also to receive your communion. Then we're here at an early sunrise service on Sunday morning. Put it into your hearts and schedules to be here for that also. And we'll receive communion during our sunrise service. So please prepare your hearts and your schedules to share with us as we prepare for this great week before us. Let's prepare now. Our praise leaders are going to come back and minister our song of preparation, and then we're going to prepare for the word of God. power, hallelujah, and we realize that there's nobody like God, hallelujah, can we just thank the Lord, hallelujah, and lift up a hallelujah, can we just thank the Lord and lift up a praise that honors who God is in our lives, hallelujah, because there's nobody like him, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. 
in your hands. Or we use a, a statement of saying, God, I've done all that I could do. Yeah. And now it's in your hands. Because many of us have come to realize and discover that 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 we may be experiencing, it works out better when we move it from our hands and put it into the hands of the Lord. This saying from the cross has been identified as the last saying of Jesus hanging there on Calvary's cross. John gives us the words of him saying, Woman, behold thy son, and son, behold thy mother. Yeah. A few verses later, John says, I thirst. And then the final words that, that John reminds us of Jesus saying is, it is finished. But here Luke the physician helps us because Luke summarizes and helps us with the final of the seven sayings from the cross because now Jesus wants to release all from himself and place it in the hands of his father because he is aware that if there's anyone that will be able to keep the people and hold things in care even in his absence it's his father yes, he went to his father you remember earlier in the garden of gethsemane and placed this request before his father by saying you know if it's in your will remove this cup from me but if not let thy will be done now jesus is at the place where he's preparing to die for you and i yes, friday we'll share on good friday in the final setting of jesus uh, with the time of death but here we see jesus standing in the place for you and I of death. His death will represent life for you and I years later. Yes, it's interesting that when we looked a few weeks ago in the same chapter, we looked on the second Sunday and we saw the words of Jesus saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He speaks to his father more in Luke chapter 23 about his death because he wants the people, you and I, to understand that there has to be a correlation, a relationship between the Father and the people, similar to that of the shepherd and the sheep. That's why when we open up in the Lord's Prayer, we open up with a zeroing in on the words by saying, our father and then it talks about the location which art in heaven yes, sir. here jesus helps us because he says father forgive them for they know not what they do and now jesus in the final statement says these words he he says father into thine hands i commend my spirit Let's first look, church, at the time that Jesus says this. Remember, there are Roman soldiers that are present. There are those that are against Jesus that are present at the cross. But we saw that we're thankful that not only are there those who were against Jesus at the cross, we're thankful for those who were at the foot of the cross that was for Jesus. Yeah. We're thankful that his mother was present and, and the wife of Cleophas, Mary, was present and Mary Magdalene was present and John, the other disciple, was present. We're, we're thankful that they were present and we, we are thankful now that when Jesus is getting ready to give up the ghost and Jesus is getting ready to die, before he says those words in verse 43 he says 
Verily I say unto you, today shall I be with, shall thy be with me in paradise. The timing, the timing is important because it says it was about the sixth hour. Jesus is here in this very strategic position where energy and strength has been or is being released from his body and it's the sixth hour and the Bible says something. The Bible helps us because church family, there were three hours of darkness and of darkness and this three hours of darkness we need to understand was a miracle. It, it, it wasn't an ordinary darkness because it was, this was not an eclipse where there would be a few moments of darkness, uh, but the Bible helps us because uh, that they would have been impossible during the Passover season uh, because it was right now, it was a full moon. Somebody got to get this. It was a full moon, but darkness covers the face of the earth. Yes, Simply because it was a God sent darkness that shredded across the cross that Jesus was hanging on for the sins of you and I. Let me make it plain and break it down. The darkness that took place from the sixth to the ninth hours was God sin. Some of y'all got to get this in your homes this morning. Have you ever had a bright day outside, but have had a dark time in your life? Have everything around you been shining and glooming and glossy, and everything is at a gloss and joy is around you, but in your life, it's a season of darkness. There can be light for others. There can be celebration for others. There can be victory for others. But you can wake up one morning and it's a bright day, but by 12 noon, it can be dark in your life. One phone call that your child has gotten in trouble, it can bring darkness. One day of surgery can bring darkness. One phone call that death has creeped into your family can bring the darkness. Darkness can come when there's a full moon, when there's brightness, when the sun is shining. Darkness can still arise. Yes, sir. The Bible says that there was darkness that covered the face of the earth and it was for three hours. Hold fast to the number three here because from the sixth to the ninth, darkness happens. But at the same time, in the three that hours that darkness occurred, we are thankful that it's also in the family and the summation of the Trinity. Yes, We're thankful that it's in the family of the Father. Somebody don't know when to shout because it's the Father that you call on. It's the Father that you look to. Some of us have given him other names. We named him Jehovah Jireh, we've named him Jehovah Ropa, we've named him Jehovah Elohim, but you ought to be thankful that you can go to the Father. But then when we want to get a divine healing, we look to the Son. We, we can go to the Son and say, thank you, Jesus, for making a way out of nowhere. About three of us in this room and about five at home this morning ought to be able to help me. That when you called on the name of Jesus, he provided for you. He made a way for you. He opened doors for you. Jesus is a friend of mine. That's why the hymn writer says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And, 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 and so darkness covers the, the face of the earth until the ninth hour. The ninth hour. Don't miss it. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 helps us because 
It says, but he had made him to be sin for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus became sin, sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Church family, it was though all nature was sympathizing with the creator as he suffered and he died. It, 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 it was like everybody knew everywhere that Jesus was dying. Yeah. So darkness covered the face of the earth. For three hours, yeah. darkness. Daytime, but darkness. On, Somebody got to get yeah. Waking up to a bright day, but darkness. Yeah. Three hours of darkness. And yeah. some of us have found out that we We've had some days that were bright at some point. And then we found darkness in the midst of it. But John helps us because John reminds us, you know, that he says he, he's the light. Yeah. And, 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 and the light of the world. And, and, and watch this because uh, this light shineth into darkness. Notice something that happens we need to be reminded of church family. We must remember that when Israel was in Egypt for three days in Old Testament, the Bible reminds us that darkness preceded the first Passover. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, you will discover that in the book of Exodus chapter number 10 yeah. around verse number 21 uh, that darkness preceded in the setting of the Passover. But not only that, we see when Jesus was on the cross, these three hours of darkness preceded the death of God's Lamb for the sins of the world. Listen to what John chapter number 1, verse number 29 has to say about it. The Bible says, the next day John see the Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Behold the Lamb of God, yes, which taketh away the sin of the world. Some of us ought to be giving God some praise right there. That the Lamb of God is coming on the scene, John says, and, and he's going to take away the sins of the world. That's good news. Well, not only my brothers and sisters yeah. was verse 44 giving us the identification of the time yeah. of darkness covering the face of the earth. Amen. But verse 45 blessed us because it says the sun was dark yeah. and the veil of the temple was rent yes, in the midst. It, 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 it helps us because the veil in the temple now was torn. It was split. Yeah. Which helps us to be able to understand where we once could not enter. Yes, Somebody got to get it. Yes, because of the torn, the split of the temple, the veil of the temple rather, now we can enter. You, you, you ought to be thankful that where we once could not enter, now because of what's happening on the Calvary, we can now have access. Somebody ought to thank God this morning for access. Watch this, watch this, uh, because it helps us, church, now because the veil is torn. We have access to prayer. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because the veil is torn, we have access to receive strength. Yes, sir. Because the veil is split, we, we, we have access to receive healing. Yes, sir. Because of the veil being torn, we have access to receive breakthroughs. Yes, sir. He says, it, it, the veil, it helps us, my brothers and sisters, 
to know that Jesus was providing for you and I even hanging on the cross. I told you, I told you, he looks out for his mother on the cross. He puts his spirit in his father's hand on the cross. He begins to talk to his father from the cross by saying, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me from the cross? And my brothers and sisters, I need to remind some of us in our homes this morning and in this setting, it's your cross that sets you up for your crown. It's your pain that sets you up for your victories. Show me a man or woman who have not had some crosses to bear, and I'll show you one who does not have an authentic crown to wear. Show me one who has not had to cry sometime in the midday hour, and I'll show you one that don't have a strong hallelujah. Show me one that God has not brought through some surgeries and some pain and some disappointments and some deaths and some loneliness and some consecrations and some inconsecrations and some times in your life when you wanted to give up. Is there anybody in the room or on the channel this morning that found yourself at a point where you wanted to give up on life? You wanted to give up on God, but you ought to be thankful this morning morning that God is still a healer. You ought to be thankful that God is still a provider. You ought to be thankful that God still opens shut doors. That God still lights up your heavy load. That God still moves mountains. And God still delivers. I need about 15 of you and I'll make one more that can give God an authentic praise. That when you Seeking to rise no more. That God of mind reached way down and lifted you up. Somebody this morning want to thank God that you come through a tough season, but God is still holding your hand. God is still providing for you right now. Thank you, Lord. No cross. No crown. Y'all don't get it that way. Run back to the secular of our sister Betty Wright. Yes, sir. No pain. Somebody got it. No gain. You, you got to have some pain along the way. Jesus had pain. Jesus had agony. That's why on the cross, he says, I thirst. You know, he's going through this season. He's been pierced. He's been bruised, a crown brow thorn is on his head. His body is being stretched. He's being torn and pulled. And, and in the midst of it, he's crying out to his father. He's there on the cross. Notice what happens. The veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And then Jesus had cried with a loud voice. It's interesting that we see the change of the tenor of the text because it says Jesus cries with a loud voice. The voice of Jesus shifts now because of the agony and the pain that he's carrying. You got to understand again that the pain and the agony that Jesus is carrying is not for himself, My God. but he's carrying it for you and I. Yes, sir. He's 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 crying in the present, but he's also crying for the future. My God. He's crying because he knew we would go through a season of turmoil and violence. He's crying for our forefathers who had to experience slavery. He's crying for a season of police brutality. He's crying for a time of social justice for America. He's crying for the pain of those who will experience the death of their sons and their daughters. 
He's crying for families who will have to go through a season of repossession and a time of deportation and immigration. He's crying for a country that will experience hurt and wound and sadness. He's crying for a season in advance of COVID-19. He's crying for a time of cancer. He's crying for a time of leukemia and he's crying for a time of heartaches and back aches and, and the depression that our country will face. Jesus cries from the cross. He's crying for humanity. Some of you don't get it that way. Divinity is crying for humanity because humanity can't even cry for themselves. He who knew no sin is now crying for the sins of you and I. He's crying out to his daddy and his daddy understands the cry because prophetic word was given uh, in Old Testament. You know that he would be bruised. Uh, he would be he's sick. He would go through this season and the chastisement of peace would be upon him. He would be bruised for you and I, Isaiah said. And, and we would look at him but you know the look upon him would not be one that we would really want to see but he would die on our behalf. He's there on the cross. He cries to his father. Listen to what he says when he cries to his father. We need to understand this miracle announcement to what he's saying to us is very profound because he says, Father. He talks to his, his father a little earlier when he says, you know, Father, if it's your will, you know, I, I, I want you to remove this bit of cup from me in the Garden of Gethsemane. And every child of God before you have a Calvary, you're going to have a garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. Yes, sir. There are some of us as parents that have had to carry the weight of a family. There are some of us that had to carry the weight of children and grandchildren. You couldn't even tell nobody that you were in your garden of Gethsemane. You had to leave your inner circle. You had to leave your Peter, James, and John. You had to leave your brothers and your sisters. And, and there were some things that you had to steal away all by yourself. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. you, you knew you were in a state of depression and loneliness. Let me tell you why you knew it. Because when people were calling you, you didn't answer. Yeah. Y'all got it. When they were texting you, you wouldn't respond. Help me, somebody. When they came by, you didn't even answer the door. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Because you were in a strange and peculiar. Have any of you just ever needed what we call me time? You, 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 you needed me time. You didn't need to hear from another family member. Y'all talk back to me. You didn't need to hear from another sibling as much as you love them. You didn't need to hear from another church member. Y'all talk back to me. You didn't need to hear from a spouse. Help me somebody. You just needed some time all by yourself. You needed a time to just be able to breathe. You needed a time just to be able to scream. I need somebody at home to just scream. I need somebody in the sanctuary to just say, Pastor, I feel you. I need to scream right there. I, I'm trying to stop from screaming for y'all. Help me somebody. I'm usually a barker, but I need some screamers. Help me somebody. Somebody that's been down and all you could do was drive that blind bottom ears. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, it's not my mother. It's not my father. But it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. But I declare and I decree on this 38th day of March that there's somebody in this room and somebody on the line that's in line for a major breakthrough. Somebody ought to begin to say, Pastor, I believe it, I feel it, and I'm coming down to Breakthrough Avenue. I'm coming into a season of another breakthrough. I feel like 
healing over some bodies and minds. I feel a transformation. Thank you, Lord. That God is bringing you through a major season of change. I need you to begin to give God a praise in advance for what the Lord is getting ready to do in your life. I need you to begin to exalt His name and give God a praise right there. Thank you, Lord. Father, here it is. Into thine hands. I commend my spirit. Yes. We need to understand when our Lord released his spirit, the veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. Yes, Listen to how Mark in the 15th chapter around the 38th verse gives us that same translation. Yes, Mark says, and Jesus cried with a loud voice. Yes. And then he gave up the ghost. The veil of the temple was rent in twin from the top to the bottom. Amen. Watch this. Eugene Peterson, another biblical translation, says about verse number 46, the temple curtain split right down the middle. And Jesus cries out, with a loud voice yes, sir. On, and says, Father, I place my life in your hands. Yes, How many of you ever just gone to God and say, God, this debt that I'm carrying, yes, I put it in your hands. Yes, well, let me remind somebody that God can kill some dead. Because on the cross, he says, it is finished. And so now, the debt of death has to die. Because the words, it is finished, symbolizes that it's over. But in the biblical setting, when you study the background, the words, it is finished simply means it's paid in full. Yes, sir. And somebody got to get it this morning that what Jesus did for us, church family, Oak Calvary, was that what he was saying is that the debt of your sins are paid in full. You will no longer have to go to the priests, neither will you have to enter into the tabernacle and offer animals as a sacrifice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because what Jesus has done is that Hebrews reminds us uh -huh. that he dies once and for all. Yes. And so we can go to the Father because the Father paid the price through His Son, uh -huh. giving His life for you and I yes, on Calvary. Yes. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you right there. Thank you. What I'm getting ready to do, He says, I put my life in your hands. Yes, sir. Because I know that in your hands, my life is in a safe deposit box. It's in a safe place and you are the only one that can give access and you're the only one that allowed me to go to Calvary and die for the sins of the world. 
And so now I need you, Father, to hold my life in your hands. Because you are the one that know in three days I'm going to get up again. And I need to remind somebody today there's a safekeeping when you put your hands in the hands of the Lord. Have I got about five witnesses here that know when you put it in God's hand, God is the only one that can secure it and keep it. Come here and tell them blind bottom ass, you know, it's the hand of Jesus that laid hands on me. And when he laid hands on me, I received sight. All because of the hand of Jesus. Come here, woman, with the issue of blood. You trailed me like a trailblazer of blessings. And you reach from behind that you touch the hem of my garment. And when you touch the hem of my garment, I, I turned around with an open-end question by asking, who touched me? And when you responded, I performed a miraculous miracle on the spot. I took your issue, put it in my hands, and I dried up your issue on the spot. Have I got a witness here? Come here, boy, that is hanging out by the pool of the Bethesman. You were trying for so long to get into the water to get healed of your sickness. But every time you would go to get into the water, somebody would jump ahead of you. When the angel was stirring up the water, somebody would get ahead of you. And I need to remind somebody this morning that the way God is going to bless you will be different from the way he blessed your neighbor. Have I got a witness here? You may think that you got to get in line, but I found out that there's some of us in this ministry that God is going to pull out the line and God's going to give you a one-on-one -on -one blessing because of your labor and because of your pain and because of your sacrifice. I hear the voice of the Lord saying, I'm going to bless you beyond measures. Have I got a witness here? Now give me about three prayer warriors and give me about five praisers and let me tell you a little story I told you some years ago. I'm reminded of a little boy and his mom that went down to the corner store. They had went down to the corner store week after week. And this particular day, the mother told the son, I'm going to let you get a treat today when you go into the store. Because of your good grades, I want you to be able to get some candy and the boy went to the candy section. The owner of the store was standing there with the bag. He told the little boy, reach in and grab some candy and put it in the bag. The little boy said no. The mama said, boy, reach in, grab some candy and put it in the bag. The boy said no. Mr. Owner, I want you to put my candy in the bag. The owner said, no, son, you put your own candy in the bag. The boy said, no, Mr. Owner, I want you to take your hand and put my candy in the bag. And the boy began to be rebellious. His mother said, if you keep being disobedient, you're not going to get any candy. He said, Mama, all I'm saying is I want the owner to 
to put the candy in the bag and the owner became a little disgruntled and he said okay I'll do it this time the owner took his hand grabbed the candy and put it in the bag and the boy began to smile when they were leaving the store the boy's mother asked him why did you want the owner to use his hand to get the candy in the bag the boy said listen mama the owner's son and I are classmates in school somebody got to get this I'm talking about the father and the son and my friend in school told me whenever I want to get candy at his daddy's store let my daddy get the candy for you and he asked him why he said because my daddy's hands are bigger than your hands and if you use my daddy's hand you'll get more candy with my daddy's hand than you will with your hand good morning church somebody here today needs to know you need to put your pain in a hand that's bigger than your hand. You need to put your problem in a hand that's bigger than your hand. You need to put your heartbreaks in a hand that's bigger than your hand. You need to put your hand in the hands of the man that steals the water. You need to put your hand in the hands of the man that holds in the palm of his hand I'll see you Friday but until then is there anybody here that got a praise in your belly is there anybody here that know that God has smiled on you God has been good to you put your hand in God's hand and God will take care of you. It all depends, church, on whose hands it's in. Put your hand in God's hand. And God will take care of you. Come on, come on, put your hands together. Bless God in this place. Come on. Bless God in this place. It all depends on whose hands it's in. When it's in God's hands, it makes a major difference. It's in His hands. Father, into Thy hands, I commend my spirit. So those words right there, we this moment to extend the invitation to discipleship. Whose hands will you be in? The man who can calm the rain sea. It's in his hands. We commit to our spirit. So all of this room your homes we we pray for and we'll put it in the master's hand in the hands of Jesus we extend this invitation to discipleship now that whether you be in your homes or you're in this sanctuary we offer Christ to you we offer this relationship, this walk with the Father, that will make a major difference in your life. That covenant relationship, that growth, that walk with you. So we offer Christ. You can call me at 305 762 9623. Or you can physically walk to the altar. God has surrendered. I'm already saved, but I just
just want to be in a place of growth. I'm already in a relationship with the Father. But I just want to grow in His Word. We extend the invitation for you to walk out from wherever you may be and just come and say, Pastor, I want to be a part of this walk with the Father. Into thy hands, I commit my spirit. One more of you, God, and less than myself. This walk. This walk. This walk with the Father. This relationship to grow in Him. This relationship to grow in Him. This walk with the Father. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your people. We pray now in the name of Jesus that you would keep us in a care of growth, care of blessings, men and women and God that we want more of you and less of ourselves. Cover us with our blood. Keep us in that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together. Bless God in this room. Thank you, Jesus. And in your homes. We prepare now to worship in our time of giving. We worship in our walk with the Lord in the presence of his people in this place. So now we thank God for this time. We thank God for these precious moments to share in giving. Wherever you may be in the sanctuary or in your homes, you give through the app. You place your gifts in the mail. We prepare to give. We prepare to thank God for the opportunity to give. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We bless your name. The time to give unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Rejoice again in following our announcements and our events of the week. Prepare for prayer at 11.45 a.m. on Wednesday as we go before the Lord. Time of Good Friday and our sunrise service. Come out on Saturday and share in communion and the Lord's Supper and receiving your communion for Sunday morning. And also in our time of sharing and taking pictures. God bless you. Let's stand in our homes. Please stand with us. Father God, we come now. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your people. We thank you for your word. Oh God, help us. Strengthen us and guide us. Protect us and be with us. We thank you going into that hands. In my spirit. Bless now. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, knowing that you are our Alpha and our Omega, our beginning and our end. Give us traveling grace. Bring us in for this great week of Passover and joy and celebrating safety over the campus every day. Bless our Good Friday resurrection service and Saturday unity and taking pictures of love and joy. We're careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these people now and forever. Let the church sing.